Given the research that I do for this channel, I am no stranger to surprising, even shocking, and sometimes controversial claims regarding Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. To a large extent, it's to be expected that cognitive impairments like Alzheimer's would be the subject of much attention and speculation. This is especially the case because Alzheimer's disease is routinely listed as one of the main non-homicidal causes of death in the United States. And yet, scientists have yet to rule definitively on the cause or causes of the condition. Even still, one of the most eye-popping assertions that I have seen recently came by way of an advertisement announcing a supposed link between earwax and memory loss. Now, I'll be honest, the text was accompanied by a rather nauseating image. But when my revulsion subsided, I decided to dig into the claim. As always, I have to point out that this video is for general informational or entertainment purposes only. I am not a medical practitioner, I'm not a healthcare advisor of any kind, and so this presentation is not intended to diagnose any condition or to recommend any course of treatment. If you have medical concerns, you need to contact a licensed professional in your area. But with that said, here's what I found out about the astonishing possible relationship between earwax and cognitive and memory decline. Let's dive in. According to Healthline, earwax could be a health issue. The reason is that buildup can result in mood disturbances and even brain dysfunction. Now, I've been aware of the link between cognitive impairment and hearing loss, but it was a rather jarring advertisement that got me curious about this earwax angle. And since that angle appears to be afforded credibility by Healthline, I figured that it was worth a look. The technical medical term for earwax is this stuff called either cerumen or cerumen which latter pronunciation seems more natural to me, so that's the one I'll go with. Briefly, the problem is twofold. The accumulation of cerumen can block the ear canal and it can damage hearing aids, both of which adversely affect hearing. Now, you might wonder why earwax even exists at all if this stuff can just gum up our auditory works. And the answer, apparently, is that it serves to help clean and protect the ear canal. Usually, earwax production is self-limiting, and bits of it are naturally expelled due to the movement of the facial muscles. But sometimes, things just don't go as they should. In those cases, doctors are able to go in and manually clear the ear opening, or auditory meatus. This can be a vital service, since earwax that remains in the ear canal can accumulate and harden in a pathological condition called impaction. Impaction can lead to dizziness, since the ears proprioceptive abilities help regulate balance, it can lead to earache, and it can lead to hearing loss. Additionally, dizziness can also increase the risk of falls. And as I have previously discussed, hearing loss is associated with dementia risk. Much of this was the topic of discussion on a Reddit forum recently. Apparently, I hadn't been the only person to take notice of the previously mentioned advertisement. One of the posters in the subreddit summarized the possible causal chain by writing that earwax can cause hearing loss, which can cause memory loss. However, the respondent quickly qualified this remark by opining that, quote, it's a huge stretch, end quote. Before I comment on this judgment, let me lay out three reasons why earwax impaction is a particular problem for older adults. Firstly, the consistency of the body's earwax production changes as we age. Specifically, our cerumen becomes drier and harder when we get older, and these properties increase the chances of impaction. Secondly, when seniors experience cognitive or mobility impairment, their personal hygiene can suffer, thus also increasing the likelihood of pathological earwax buildup. Also possibly relevant, thirdly, is the simple fact that older adults have more years under their belt and therefore have had more time for their earwax to accumulate. I know it's an odd conversation, but is it a stretch to worry that earwax buildup could lead to memory loss? Just as a reminder, this is what the poster wrote, quote, I'd imagine most people would get the earwax removed long before it can cause any permanent cognitive issues. In these comments, the operative words seem to me to be most people and removed long before. What should we think here? especially keeping in mind that Alzheimer's and dementia, both focuses of this channel, inordinately afflict older populations. According to geriatrician Maria Carney, quote, most people don't even realize that they have an issue, end quote. Now, intuitively, if you don't recognize a problem, you're unlikely to seek a remedy. But it is crucial to observe that Carney's observation has been regarding older adults, as opposed to a wider cross-section of people. So the phrase, most people, in her quotation, refers to most older adult patients seen by Dr. Carney's practice and the 
Northwell Health Center in New York generally. Even so, this lack of awareness gives us some reason to see the potential seriousness of the earwax issue. Because if we are supposing that most people would treat their earwax buildup before it led to serious adverse health effects, it is highly relevant that most older adults may not even know there's a problem at all. In other words, they have an awareness issue. Another factor is that some facilities, for example, assisted living and long-term care institutions such as nursing homes, may not have staff who are trained to identify or address the relevant condition. Even in institutions that do have adequately trained nurses or ear, nose, and throat, that is ENT specialists, earwax accumulation might not be regarded as an especially pressing issue. So we could call these additional factors lack of ability and lack of attention. Taken together, these three factors suggest that we may indeed have a problem. If older adults tend not to appreciate their predicament, we may have a problem. If the facilities in which many of them reside may not be up to the task of dealing with the pertinent concerns, we may have a problem. And by the way, this is a worry that may not simply be hypothetical, but which may be actual, at least if this Journal of Multidisciplinary Healthcare article is to be believed. And even where knowledge isn't the entirety of the matter, we still have the fact that many healthcare practitioners may give earwax evaluation and removal a rather low priority status. If that's the case, we may have a problem. I should add, however, that this low status is not altogether inexplicable or even unjustified given the severity of the other conditions that predominate in long-term care environments. Conditions, of course, like Alzheimer's disease, which is the focus of this channel. But taking a peek into the aforementioned article, we read that lack of proper and regular hearing aid maintenance is part of a constellation of difficulties that also includes haphazard earwax examination procedures. Thus, we see multiple considerations can dovetail, and aggravate each other, as, for instance, how earwax can diminish both hearing aid effectiveness and hearing aid use. This reduction in use is partly due to the fact that feedback can develop in part because of earwax accumulation. Additionally, hearing aids need to be cleaned periodically in order to ensure functionality and protect wearers from worsening of their hearing. So as Helpline puts it, earwax buildup can lead to negative consequences for both mood and brain function. The primary causal pathway is via a link between hearing loss and the impairment of cognition, hearing loss that is made worse by earwax impaction. And so by extension, earwax impaction may be relevant to impairments of cognition. As previously mentioned, I touched on the intriguing hearing loss dementia correlation in a previous video. This troubling connection has been described in several peer-reviewed journal articles, for example, this Journal of Neurology article, Hearing and Dementia, published in 2016. The encouraging aspect of all this is that, quote, simple interventions such as earwax removal can be highly effective at correcting or at least mitigating the underlying problems. One study reported in a 2014 article in the journal Geriatrics and Gerontology International found that hearing aid improved significantly after offending earwax had been extracted. And perhaps more importantly for our purposes, the ceremony removal also resulted in, quote, significant cognitive improvement. One obvious takeaway, therefore, is to make ear canal examinations a routine component of regular healthcare visits, especially, although surely not exclusively, for seniors. As an aside, a second contributor to the Reddit conversation mentioned earlier rightly observes that hearing loss can be of two sorts, conductive and sensory neural. Conductive hearing loss results from a mechanical obstruction in the ear canal. An object, for example, wax, physically blocks the sound waves. Sensory neural hearing loss, on the other hand, or as it were, in the other ear, has to do with anatomical or physiological damage to the sensory organs or nerves themselves. According to the prestigious Johns Hopkins Medical Center, it is sensory neural loss that is the most common type of hearing loss, and it is often the result of aging. But this means for at least some earwax impaction sufferers, the hearing loss they experience may actually be the so-called mixed type, which, as the name suggests, is a combination of the other two sorts. A further wrinkle comes by way of the fact that hearing loss can sometimes be hard to differentiate from cognitive defects, so testing could stand to be improved. What's the bottom line? Hearing loss is indisputably considered a risk factor for Alzheimer's, dementia, and other types of cognitive impairment at least according to current thinking. Additionally, it's not only the case that earwax impaction makes hearing loss worse, but it's also the case that cognition sometimes measurably improves when the offending ceremony is removed. However, as usual, there are some important caveats. 
For instance, the precise effect that hearing deficits, including those caused by earwax buildup, have on cognitive function is highly variable and difficult to predict. It's also worth noting that hearing problems can sometimes lead to other problems, such as increases in fall risk. Which brings me to the point that the dangers posed by earwax are not the same for everyone. For example, the perils are greater for those requiring long-term care. Earwax impaction disproportionately afflicts the aged, the cognitively impaired, and those residing in nursing homes. It has even been called an epidemic, especially for those living in that context. But once again, the picture isn't entirely dark because the treatments are fairly simple. Let's start with the recommendations from Harvard's medical school. For the most part, the advice is actually do nothing. Doctors agree, leave your earwax alone for the most part. Still, in pathological cases like those we've been focusing on, wax removal is important. Specifically, for dementia sufferers, it may need to be removed regularly. And you really have two options. Number one, get medical assistance. Or number two, do it yourself. Though the Chicago Tribune warns that such do-it-yourself or DIY approaches are usually not recommended by professionals. But if you'd at least like to look into it for yourself, the old standby Doctor's Book of Home Remedies is an excellent place to start. In that publication, we're given a basic four-step method, beginning with what not to do. Namely, do not stick anything into your ears. This means that cotton swabs are a definite no-no, which may seem counterintuitive since I take it that ear cleaning was their original purpose. Number two, use a softening liquid. This could be hydrogen peroxide, mineral oil, or glycerin. Or it could be over-the-counter eardrops like Debrox or Murine. Use only as directed. Number three, rinse your ear with water after the softener has had time to work. And number four, carefully blow your ears dry. If these do-it-yourself approaches don't work, it may be time to consult a professional. Finally, the Hearing Journal mentions the possibility of obtaining a wax guard to help protect hearing aids if you or a loved one are aware of it. I honestly hope you didn't find the topic too disagreeable. I know it was very jarring to me when I first encountered the information, but if you appreciated the content, I ask that you hit the like button. And if you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll actually be alerted to new content as it becomes available. Either way, I thank you so much for being with me today, and I hope to see you again in another video. Thank you so much.